Hello, I see you made it to Infrared Photography Part 2, post-processing JPEGs and RAW files. Well, let's get right into it. Before anyone asks, yes, I'm using a Mac, I have Macs, I have Windows PCs, I have pretty much everything, so let's get past that right now. Anyway, the next step in infrared photography, after you've actually gone out and taken the images, is post-processing, which isn't entirely straightforward, unfortunately. You can start your post-processing with either the JPEG produced by the camera or the RAW file. However, you can only use the JPEG if you followed the previous tip and white balanced your camera properly. If you are using auto white balance, the image will be unrecoverable and basically a big red mess. So follow that first tip, it's very important. Let's start by looking at the JPEG, because we have to do a few tweaks to get the RAW file to work, and I'll show you those in just a moment. Okay, here we have our straight out of the camera JPEG taken using the extreme green white balance that I had mentioned in the first tip. Obviously there's a lot that can be done with the image and your first step should probably be a basic curves adjustment to bring some of the contrast back and just clean things up a bit. However, that's not what I'm going to start with because, well, you probably already know how to do that. Instead, I'm going to show you two simple things that can be done with IR images in Photoshop. The first of the two is a simple color channel invert that will give you that blue sky and kind of yellow white foliage effect. To do this, we're going to go up to image, adjustments, and we're going to need the channel mixer. And with the channel mixer up here, what we're going to do is we're going to swap the red and blue channels. So first you'll want the output channel set to red. We're going to set blue to 100 and set red to zero. Then we're going to change the output channel to blue and we're going to set red to 100 and blue to zero. And then we're going to hit OK. And as you can see, we now have a blue sky and yellow white foliage. It's important to note that the deeper near IR filters that you can choose will mostly produce black and white images. Uh, by allowing a little bit of the visible red to pass, you end up with the false color images like the one you have here. And that false color really helps you out in post-processing because it gives you differentiation between the different elements in your image that you can just easily grab onto and do either tone mapping or, or adjusting colors of specific elements or simple things like this channel flip. The second quick tip is regarding black and white conversion. Traditionally, a lot of infrared photography is done as black and white and it's really stunning looking, but you don't tend to get particularly stunning results by simply telling Photoshop, make it a black and white. No what you want to do instead is create a black and white adjustment layer. And we'll pull up to black and white. All right, and here we get our black and white adjustment layer. The black and white adjustment layer is handy because it allows you to manipulate the end result of the black and white conversion by pulling these sliders back and forth for each of the different color channels that exist within the image. The layer mask it applies also makes selective color very easy. You can make adjustments simply by moving the sliders around. I'll grab yellows here, which will be elements of our foliage. You can see things getting brighter and darker within the foliage areas as I do that. You can grab the reds and adjust those. If you grab the blues, we can mess with the sky some make it brighter, darker, almost black if you want. And the great thing about it being just an adjustment layer is you can just play with these. Find something you like and, and just go with it. And, you know, if you don't like it, no big deal. Just ditch the layer and start over or reset everything and try again. You haven't actually done anything permanent to your image. So let's say you aren't the type who works with JPEGs you know who you are. Working with RAW files requires a little bit of setup first. If you simply try to open the RAW file, just straight out of the camera, you'll end up with something like this, a red mess. Why a red mess, even though you did all that fancy white balancing? Well, that's because the default color temperature range in Adobe Camera Raw doesn't actually go low enough to hit the appropriate color temperature for the infrared image. So you end up with a red mess. We'll have to solve this by using Adobe's free DNG profiling tool to create essentially a white balance color temperature offset, which will expand the color temperature range low enough for this to function correctly. The tools you'll need are the Adobe DNG Converter and Adobe DNG Profile Editor. Both of these tools are free and available from Adobe's website in both Windows and Mac versions. The first step will be to take one of your IR RAW files and run it through Adobe's DNG Converter. 
because the DNG profiler tool will only accept Adobe DNG files. DNG Converter is very easy to use. Start by selecting the folder that your raw file is located in. In this case, I've already done that. Set your options up however you choose. In this case, I don't really need to change much. And hit Convert. And it's done. You now have a shiny new DNG file. Next, open up DNG Profile Editor. Once DNG Profile Editor is open, we'll need to open a DNG file. So let's open a DNG image. With the DNG file open, we're gonna go ahead and navigate over to the Color Matrices tab and adjust the white balance temperature calibration way down. Not quite all the way, maybe negative 98 or so. And then we're gonna save the profile by going up to File, Export Canon EOS 650D Profile. Save to Camera Profiles, which it's a different path in Windows, but even the Windows version should just by default put things in the right places. And we'll hit Save. Now we should be able to open the image in Adobe Camera Raw. Opening the DNG file in Adobe Camera Raw, you'll see that, well, things are still a red mess, but we're not done yet. You need to head over to the camera icon, Camera Calibration, and we're gonna need to change the profile, the camera profile, from Adobe Standard to the new EOS 650D untitled recipe that we just created. I probably should have given this a name on this computer, but eh, it's for a YouTube video. As soon as you select that camera profile, the white balance color temperature offset will be applied, and selecting white balance as shot will give you approximately the right uh, the right result. From here, you can feel free to play with color temperature as you see fit, as your slider's been put just about in the middle of the range. That's all the setup that's required before post-processing your RAW files to your heart's content. I hope you guys enjoyed this brief look into infrared photography. As always, questions, comments down below, rate, subscribe. See you later!